So um, we're looking at uh, personal productivity, and these are some you know practical things. And I'm sure that uh, you know all of us have some some hacks uh, to you know make our time. Uh, I mean, make our um, whatever work that we do to be productive, and uh, you know all that. So all of us have some things. So it, it would um, kind of uh, uh, be a repetition, you know. Um, maybe some of these things you already know. Right? So uh, we started off by looking at um, uh, one very basic thing, which is uh, organizing. Okay, now it's uh, so basic, so fundamental, so simple that it's overlooked, and it can actually create create uh, so much of chaos. Right, uh, simple things like. Um, uh, like filing away information, like filing away things that you can actually reuse. Okay, so that's the second thing. You know, when we organize, then we are more effective. You know, let's say uh, on your laptop, uh, on your you know, personal computer, uh, and most of us work with computers or laptops, or even otherwise. You know, um, you know how are we? Um, how organized are we? And sometimes when you just look at uh, the desktop of certain, you know, laptops or uh, personal computers, it's uh, it's like so chaotic. Everything is there on the desktop, you know. So we wonder, you know, how can th this person actually access uh, things when they require? I mean, maybe it's a word file, maybe it's some, you know, maybe it's some picture, maybe it's some uh, some document that is required for the work. You know, how can they access it? Right, or maybe if it's their emails, you know, uh, how can I, how are they going? Of course, the search function has it can definitely help, but if you actually organize it and categorize it and, and put it in certain slots, then it's even more efficient, right? So, organizing things, um, so it, it works, you know, and in your area of work, in your area of ministry, um, you know, simple things like, um, you know, even personally, if you look at, you know, your own wardrobe, you know, where you put your things. Many times we we actually search, you know, where is that shirt? Where is that socks? And uh, and it's all one, you know, one big, uh, one place. Everything is there, and we spend a lot of time searching. You know, we spend a lot of time searching for our keys. We send spend a lot of time searching where our phone is, uh, because we don't put it in a certain place. You know. Like recently, um, yeah, yeah, we were just searching for keys, and uh, actually, our my mother-in-law just stays opposite apart, you know, opposite to where we stay, and so um, you know, we decided, okay, this is where we're going to put, you know, since she's uh, old, uh, we all we have a key to the apartment, and uh, uh, you know, whatever help, even if there's an emergency or anything, we can always let ourselves in. So. It's very important that we have that key and we find that key, right? So then we decided, okay, this is where it is going to be. You know, no matter what, no matter what kind of hurry we are in, we will put that key. It's got a yellow key chain. So that yellow key, as we call it, has to be here all the time. It has to be there in that bowl with all those keys. So we know, right? We can we, we can immediately find it. So it's a simple thing, right? But if we overlook that, it can have consequences, right? Um, for example, like once um, she actually had a fall, she had a vertigo, uh, kind of a disease spell, and uh, and fell down, and we had to go and intervene. So uh, it had to be done immediately, and uh, um, because she couldn't lift herself up, right? She is feeling weak, and she couldn't lift herself up. So. We had to find that key immediately. She couldn't let. She can open the door. We had to go. So you, you know, you see, it's a very simple act. It's a very simple thing. But if we overlook that simple thing, it can have consequences, right? So also, you know, uh, many times we make fun of people who are organized. We make fun of, uh, you know, uh, people who are. Uh, uh, you know who who are so regimented in their lives. Okay, I need to put this. And yeah, I know that there there can be a you know you can take things to a limit, right? Take take things to a, an extreme um, uh, limit. But having said that, you know if we do this, it can make our life simple. It can make our life uh, our work 
a lot more productive okay organized just look into your own life the, the own uh, you know area work what is it that needs to be organized okay what is it that needs to be put together in certain batches what is it that needs to be you know set in place arranged in place that will be that you know you know it's not like we do not know right excuse me we know that this will actually make things better but our problem is we do not invest that time to make it organized because that's going to require time okay and not just one time but it's going to be uh, uh, you know from time to time right uh, frequently you need to invest that time um, in order to make things organized right and uh, also you know um, we kind of tell our uh, you know ministry uh, worship teams especially uh, doing orientation you know don't search for your clothes uh, sunday morning right make sure that uh, that's one of the things that we're going to look at work ahead, working ahead of time you know you say don't don't make that mistake sunday morning worship team you're the first to go or the second team to be there you know after the setup and everything the sound team is there you need to be there for the sound check so don't do not be searching for your clothes oh where is this I, I need to wear that oh the button is missing oh suddenly oh it's crushed i need to iron it don't do that on a sunday morning right you get it ready maybe friday or saturday so that sunday morning all you need to do is just take it and wear it and go okay so uh, when we organize our lives organize our things organize our time then we can be efficient right and it, it, it can actually cut away a lot of frustration a lot of frustration uh, from the tasks that we do okay so reuse for efficiency so that's another thing you know when we reuse certain things um, we can be even more efficient okay so for example uh, like you know, maybe pastors, you know, you need to give certain letters, maybe you need to draft certain letters, maybe a thank you letter, maybe a, a letter for reference for school admission or college admission, you know. So if it's a Christian institution, they, they want to know what is your church affiliation, you know, are you part of a church, etc. So, uh, you know, there's a letter for that. Or maybe you know, for whatever you know there are so many um, there's so much of correspondence right that is required uh in in a from a church kind of a setting maybe people need letters for you know uh, references for you know getting married it's so what so you have you know all these things so it helps if you have a template right so for you know i have this template for uh for those who ask for you know the church membership that they are members of the church and they've been members for such a long time, etc. You know, and they either they for themselves or for their children uh, when they are considering, you know, uh, admissions. So I have a I have a template. I don't have to go and start from scratch. You know, to whomsoever it may concern, etc. I I have those. I have a template there, and I just need to. You know, make changes, but make sure I just need to make sure that all the changes are done. Right? It doesn't have. The previous uh, content over there, okay. Maybe wedding bands uh, announcing, you know, that these two people are getting married in church. You know, we have a template, so reuse that, right? Reuse that saves a lot of time. Maybe you're sending a welcome email, reuse it, but personalize it, right? Um, so it doesn't feel like a form letter, you know, which you send everybody. Personalize it but you can reuse it. So personalizing it requires a very little time, right? Um, rather than starting from scratch. So you reuse things. What are some things that I can reuse? What are those routine routine tasks, uh, routine processes that I have in place that I can actually reuse, right? Think of that. Okay, working ahead of time. This is a, this is a big one, you know. Some of us thrive on the 11th hour. If not for the eleventh hour, like somebody said, none of these things would get done. You know, recently, you're talking about how things work in an advertising agency. 
so 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 this friend of ours was saying that uh, you know even for a product launch like some new phone launch they they were actually the timeline is very short in a sense like sometimes it's five days three days and they are working on an ad film and you know getting a lot of things goes in the, the shoot of that ad film the models and everything so and uh, he was saying how uh, the music for that you know sometimes they want original music and uh, things to work uh, the jingle the song right for the for the ad product launch and and uh, so one of our other friends was saying hey sometimes they just give it in the evening and then say yeah and we ask okay when do you want it and then they say uh, next morning uh, can i have it by 7 a.m or 6 a.m you're, you're giving it at 10 p.m so you know sometimes the yes the reality is the deadline is like that but we can always work ahead of time like when we know that okay there are certain things coming up we can work ahead of time and i think uh, uh, you know some of the things we struggle in is uh, you know suppose somebody's birthday somebody's anniversary you know maybe in our family friends and and you get invited and you're scrambling for gifts you know, the last minute oh, what do we what do we give what do we get them this wedding well, we knew well in advance, but uh, you know we didn't put in that time and effort to plan ahead. The last minute, on the way, we are you know scrambling for some things, and then we buy and they say, "Oh, it doesn't. It's not good." You know, I wish we had something better to give, and so on. Right? So, working ahead of time always helps. So, and also when when it comes to working ahead, you know, this is a great help. And we put a time limit, right? Put a time limit and say, okay, for this task, it's not going to be nine to five, but it's going to be nine to ten. Right? Within this task, within this time, I'm going to finish it. Okay? Try it. Okay? Like somebody said that the, the the time within which you want to finish a task actually extends or expands to the closing time that you give, right? If you give yourself, let's say, I'm, I'm giving myself you know, reasonably, you know, reasonable time to do that. You can't be unreasonable in it. So but reasonable time to finish a task, let's say an hour, and it requires some thinking, it requires some planning, and you give yourself an hour to finish it. You know, if you give two hours to finish, well, you can stretch it for two hours. You know, you would always, the task actually, you know, stretches to the deadline that you give it so you know give it a, a reasonable limit and, and and see how we work changes right so when you're thinking of tasks next time you know you have 10 things to do you know, for each of those tasks um you know you can either slot it like we looked at um, you know peter bregman the the, the to-do list with maybe six areas you know looking at uh, you know six areas uh, which Six, six core areas, you know, and all these six core areas, you need some things to be done, right? You can actually have that, map it out, and each of those tasks, give it some time, time limit, saying that I need to finish it in 30 minutes and see how well you can do it, right? So how well you end up doing it, okay? Okay, so working ahead of time is that. The, the thing, the fourth one is um, prioritizing. Okay, doing the most important work during our best time of day. You know, if you look at you know, uh, let's say a typical ten-hour working day in a day, you know, ten hours you work probably, you know, maybe eight to you know, seven or whatever. Uh, is that ten hours? I don't know. Okay, ten hours. Okay, uh, or eight hours, for example, nine to five, eight hours. Um, there are some certain hours in a day when a person is uh, highly productive. Okay, so you are very productive. You know that, and it and it differs from person to person, right? There are some times then that you are, some time of the day that you are very very productive. You are sharper, more alert. Uh, your energy levels are high, and uh, do the you know that's the best working hour for you, right? Maybe it's not post lunch. But it's definitely you know those two hours or three hours before lunch. That's when you're maybe that's how it is for you. Well, 
you know, do the best work, the most important work, right? That requires all of your energy and thinking and um, do it then, right? Um, and also the, the important work and also the challenging work, the most challenging ones, which require a lot of your energy, don't keep it for times when your energy levels are down, right? Okay, so those are some simple things where we can be uh, efficient okay? and uh, do what you do best, uh, delegate others, uh, delegate the work to others who do it well okay so so this is you know of course if we have the luxury of a team then we can do this um where whatever we're doing best whatever we are capable of or skilled to do and we are got the information and that the, got the learning to do do it okay but if you do not have expertise in a certain area then you delegate it to others you know in, Maybe, you know, sometimes you may not have the luxury of doing that, right? You know, you, you, you have to do everything yourself, right? Maybe, you know, you're starting off, let's say, a church, you know, a pioneering a church. And yeah, some, there are times when, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you are the logistics team, you are the housekeeping, you are the, you know, you are the sound guy, uh, you are the worship team, you are the preacher, you are the member care <laughs> team and everything but pretty soon you can actually you know start things from the ground up find faithful people maybe it's one or two or three uh, we can delegate responsibilities right and especially when it comes to certain things which we are you know not so good at right let's face it you know we are gifted in certain things and maybe you know the other person is more gifted they are able to do things well delegate it to them okay don't completely cut off but delegation would require supervision from time to time so delegate it but you give the overall supervision direction right like we saw uh, when it comes to developing leaders uh same way you know from time to time supervise uh give correction give direction um delegate okay rest and refresh um uh, rest and refresh for increased efficiency or okay. oh, before that, sorry. Um, when it comes to delegation, you know, what is what you are required to do? You know, there's no one else to do that. Um, let's say you're the you're the pastor, and the preaching and teaching is done by you. You know, you are required to do that, right? Um, so do that. Right? What you must do, you do that, and what others can do, delegate it. Right? Maybe the there are certain other tasks which um, others can actually do it. Right, so find someone, uh, train them, um, make sure that they have the equipment to carry out that job well, and the skill to do it, and delegate it to them. Okay, but uh, the main thing that you are required to do, do that, and uh, don't compromise on that. Don't delegate that part of it. Right, the the leading of the team, and you know, do you know, do that well, and do it yourself okay rest and refresh for increased efficiency okay we all have you know uh, no one has unlimited energy throughout day in and day out we can go with that intensity and frequency for some time you know uh, maybe you can you're waking up early staying up late waking up early staying up late um, you know we, <clears throat> we can do that for some time maybe three days in a row you can do it but beyond that you will realize that uh, you know, your work actually starts slipping, right? Because uh, there's only so much energy, there's only um, so much you can focus and be alert, and you can't do that all the time. So we need rest to refresh, we need rest to recharge. And uh, rest is very important. You know, there's a whole lot on the theology of rest, right? Um, and, and I think there's a message on rest as well. Um, on the sermon series, you can check this uh, APC website, and uh, it'll be good right okay so uh, rest and refresh exercise to increase efficiency you know, exercise physical exercise very important uh, physical exercise does so much there is a release of you know adrenaline and endorphins god has created our bodies uh, such that whenever we exercise physically there is you know our body actually gets um, revitalized and refreshed so they do that and see the change, right? Um, many times we think exercise actually will drain us um, and we don't even attempt it, 
but if we want to see efficiency in our work you know you you exercise maybe you know not exercise to the point of you know just exhausting yourself but you know so you be refreshed maybe it's some sport right so something that you can enjoy you know maybe it's a walk or a run um something just just revitalizes you and uh, and you see the your efficiency right you the alertness that happens okay right okay any questions here anything that you want to add on what is your personal secret to efficient work anyone in addition to uh, what we saw is there anything that you do personally that might help us Anything at all? Nothing additional, Pastor. But all sorry, sorry. good reminders. Sorry, what? I was saying nothing additional. Nothing additional. All okay. These are really good reminders. Yes, thank you. Okay, okay. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, John. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, if there's anything, please do share, you know. Uh, it'll really help us. Uh, because these small things, actually, it's like I'm always reminded of this door hinge, right? Uh, the hinge is a very small, um, what do you call, gadget, which you put on the door, but it actually holds the weight of the door and swings a huge door. Um, so these are quite important, right? OK. OK, let's move on. Um, maintaining personal strength, OK? Physically, spiritually, uh, we need to maintain. Okay, so a lot of things happen at times of uh, um, a lot of mistakes. You know, people make mistakes as leaders <clears throat> when they're going through a season of exhaustion. Right? That is when we let our judgment slip. We let our you know decisions um, and and everything. Uh, slip and we make some you know looking back it'll seem like very foolish mistakes like how did i how on earth did i do that right how did i ever manage to say something like that do something like that right and you realize look back rewind and you see that yes it was at a low point maybe emotionally it was at a low point maybe physically right you're feeling low and uh, and Maybe there was some kind of a discouragement that happened and and because of which you make certain choices there which you're not proud of now. Okay. And the worst thing is this that it has uh consequences. And when you're leading and uh you know you're a spiritual leader and there are people who are influenced like uh, by your leadership, who are in your realm of leadership, and then everyone gets affected, right? So the important thing is to for us to be renewed you know, spiritually, for us to be renewed spiritually, and uh, uh, you know, as we look at uh, our strength, you know, physically and spiritually, and and the thing is this that uh, our physical strength also influences our us spiritually or lack of it right you know because and you realize when you're maybe uh you have some kind of sickness or some kind of uh, you know cold or fever or something you know it affects us spiritually as well we're not able to focus you know maybe we're not able to spend time in prayer we're not able to read the word and so on so these are connected so we need to maintain our personal strength it is our responsibility to maintain our strength so do what it takes Okay. Um, okay. Let's look at uh, this. Let's look at the scripture. Isaiah 40. We know this. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Okay. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. Uh, shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Okay. Verse 29, he gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. 
Okay, so the key is this. <clears throat> he does not faint. He does not get weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Everything is limitless, infinite when it comes to the Lord. Right? It's It does not reach an end. And he is the one who gives us of himself. And he gives power to the weak. He is infinitely powerful. He gives power to the weak. Um, to those who have no might, he increases their strength. Okay. So it comes from him, and that's why verse 31, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Okay. So we, we cannot go on and on and on without our waiting on the Lord. So our waiting on the Lord has to be continual. It has to be daily. It has to be, you know, every moment our waiting on the Lord. And uh, we cannot compromise on that. Okay, Isaiah 30 verse 15, thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest you shall be saved, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength, but you would not. Right? In returning and rest you shall be saved, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Okay, so, so this time alone, uh, of course, all of us know that, but just to reiterate, uh, it is so important. Right. It is so important for us as disciples, as believers in the Lord, and even more so as leaders. Even more so as leaders. Um, because uh, there's a lot of influence, there's a lot of impact, and also the consequence okay, for leaders. Right. So even more so for leaders. Um, so spending time with God and uh, is is very very important and the lord himself when he appointed disciples you know he said um so they so that they might be with him and that he might send them out so that being with him is very important for us being sent out without that being with him there is no sending out right and that sending out again depends on us being with him so um uh so that's the thing second thing is to keep learning you know there's a thing of progressive um, and continual growth okay uh, keep learning keep growing keep reaching new levels right as leaders because to the, to the level to which we grow is to the level to which we can take others into right so it's an exciting journey when we spend, when we walk with the lord uh, when we learn new things, when uh, you know the Lord gives us new revelation, uh, it is so that we might impart. Of course, first of all, is for us personally that we might walk in it, and that we might impart to others that others might also come to and walk in the reward or the fruit of that revelation. Right? So that understanding, that revelation of God, of His ways, uh, actually gives us access to walk in it. Right. Um, and as we walk in it, we we definitely experience the fruit of it, right? the reward of it, of walking in it. So the Lord wants us to, then there's so much, you know, there's no limit, right? So uh, we need to keep learning. And also, you know, when it comes to other things like practical things like maybe new technology, maybe new skills, maybe new um, new things that are happening. Uh, just to be aware and to see, uh, you know, learn new things and see how we can use it <clears throat> in our ministering, in our building bridges with people and so on. Right? Uh, we, we know that the core thing is, of course, the Lord. We understand that, uh, that these are all tools that we use. Now I'm talking about technology and, you know, other inventions, maybe new things, new discoveries. We, Yeah. These are just tools, right? But we also understand, like, who the, the, is the one who makes transformation, like, who has, um, I mean, who, because of him, the, the lives are touched, lives are transformed, right? So there's no substitute for that, right? There is nothing that can substitute that. So that's the main thing. We, know, we understand that. But, uh, you know, we need to keep learning, keep growing, okay, so that we can use everything else for as tools okay uh, interact with others who encourage and inspire um, take time to exercise and rest 
be thankful for everything that the Lord has done. And, uh, uh, you know, being, being thankful is, uh, is, is a wonderful thing that we, uh, you know, we realize that there is so much that the Lord has done for us. There's so much that we have received from him. Um, there's so much that uh, he continues to uh, bring into our lives. Uh, there's so much that he does. Right? Just uh, many, many times we <clears throat> take things for granted. Well, this is how it ought to be. This is how it is. But uh, we realize that when the Lord is behind all that, right? the Lord is the source. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> so let's be thankful. Let's have that attitude of being thankful, and, you know, attitude of gratitude. Okay. Then the lastly, you know, keep our uh, keep the ref uh, vision refreshed, and it's also tied to you know, our personal strength because, uh, um, well, it is possible. Like like somebody said, vision leaks. Right, the vision leaks. Uh, we can get so engrossed in the details of what we are doing, uh, and we forget. Sometimes we could forget the big picture. Okay, what is it that we are actually doing? Why are we here? Why are we doing this? We we might. I mean, there is a possibility that that dims a bit. Right. I won't say we forget completely, but we dim. Uh, that that loses focus as we focus a lot on the tasks at hand right so refresh that vision step back take a few steps back and just zoom out and look out that look at the big picture and say okay this is why we are here this is what we are doing and now we when we zoom in to the daily when we zoom in to the weekly um, what we are supposed to then it you know suddenly there's a better clarity right and there's a better way of doing things now right we can we can actually let go of certain things that are dead and, and not really contributing to the big picture, uh, which are just draining our resources. And we can put in better focus, better effort at those things, which which enable us to move towards the big picture, like right? achieving the goals. OK. Um, the next, uh, OK, so I, I, I hope uh, there are no questions on that. If there are, you can ask. And we're going to uh, another topic, which is uh, you know uh, leadership change, not not just leadership change, but leadership uh, continuity. Um, any any questions? Anything? Yeah. Yes, can I ask? Yeah, please. <clears throat> yeah, um, we were talking about uh, working ten hours and then. At certain point of the day or certain period of the working hours, yeah. when someone is more effective at yeah. their certain time of the day, we are le less effective. Uh, is it okay for a leader to take a time out during working hours at least to rest for about an hour? Is it okay? Yeah, as as long as uh, it doesn't affect certain critical, crucial tasks. You know, the thing is, as a leader, um, and let's say I'm just thinking about a typical, uh, let's say, an organization where there are other teams and other leaders who are dependent on your input, right, um, and your, on your guidance. And this one hour, uh, if they are all going to be engaged and if they require your input, they are dependent on your input, then I would say we need to shift that one hour. You know, you need to have it at a time when others are not uh, dependent on you. you know, that one, uh, um, or you can you can definitely you know uh, have an understanding at, hey, between this time and this time. I'd, I I would not like to be disturbed. You know, so everyone else plans their day, plans their uh, activities around that. So they understand that okay, this time we cannot, we don't have to approach. No, because other stars also would require your input, right? Uh, their decisions would depend on your decision, maybe. And they need to decide certain things, important things. And, and as long as you make it known, you communicate it in advance saying, this time of day, I'm not going to be available. So so then everybody understands. And then and then it's fine. You, know, you can take that time for rest or refreshing, whatever. You know, go for a walk, maybe during a lunch break. 
and uh, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Hope that helps, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we're looking at leadership uh, continuity, which is, uh, you know, just like in a relay race, we see that, okay, um, you know, there's a passing of the baton, right? Uh, baton or bat baton, however you call it. Um, there's a passing, you know, you the, the one that's running at full steam, uh, there's a passing of the baton. The person who's running behind takes the baton and uh, runs ahead. Uh, and it's a race, right? So um, in leadership of ministry, you know, this is what Pastor mentioned many years ago, you know, success in ministry is incomplete if you do not raise successors, okay? So if you want everything to come down crashing the minute you are out of the picture, then, you know, don't raise any successors. But if you, you know, when you say a ministry is going on, Right, it's uh, it's uh, continuing on to do the good work, to continuing to influence and impact people. Then we need to raise up successors, those who will carry the work. Okay. So uh, the other thing that you also mentioned uh, was the day you begin any ministry. Okay, is the day you should start planning your departure, because successors, uh, you know, a successor is someone who has. Uh, you know, who has understood the vision, who has, uh, you know, has been groomed, and who has the <clears throat> same values uh, that uh, I mean that you've imbibed and uh, you know passed on. Um, so all that, right? So it takes time. <clears throat> it takes a little bit of you know a fair amount of working together and and being there and journeying together. So um, so if we are not allow that to happen it cannot happen overnight so and that's why you know the day we begin is the day we actually start planning you know the the day that i'm not there uh, it's not a you know it's a it's not a negative thing it's like it's not a morbid thing okay uh, but it's it's a very important uh, thing to think about you know and not be uncomfortable with it okay so we understand that one day or you know after many decades, whatever it is, but but one that day will come. Okay, the day we cannot escape. That day will come when we need to pass on from here. Right? No escaping that reality. Well, definitely God does want on want us to pass on what we have received to the next generation, so that you know uh, before He comes or till He comes this good work does not stop right we continue on with the commission reaching people discipling nations you know uh, different people groups everything so this does not stop with uh, with us or never meant it to stop with us you know uh, <clears throat> this is what we see in psalms 71 17 where psalm says oh god you have taught me from my youth and to this day, I declare your wondrous works. Now, also, when I am old and gray-headed, O Lord, do not forsake me until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to everyone who is to come. So he's talking about this generation and the generation to come. right? So what is he saying? Lord, I, I want to declare your strength. I want to declare... I talk about you, uh, give a revelation of who you are or to this generation. Lord. And uh, the psalmist is, um, you know, he's old. He, is, he has seen much, he has learned much, he's old, he's gray-headed. But he's, his desire is still, Lord, I want to declare to this generation and to the one that is to come, right? to everyone who is to come. They're not there on the scene yet, but to that, uh, for the one who is to come also, I'd like to. You know, declare that. So the thing is, what, what, uh, a, a couple of things we understand that as us as leaders and ministers, this should be our, our perspective. Okay, so we do everything possible to pass on. Okay, so either by personal example, precept, one on one. There's so much you can do, right? 
you can do it for the this generation maybe but the generation that is to come there has to be ways of maybe you know uh, preserving what the lord has done in you and through you preserving that so that that can be passed on and of course you know we have technology to enable us to do that right um, either audio video books whatever right so whatever revelation understanding god has given to, to pass on to the next uh, generation as well okay so that is why you know we can you know from that scripture we understand that yes we can actually raise up or pass on two generations the one which is ahead just the you know ahead which is which, which is to come and the one which is the present generation okay um okay second timothy chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 okay. you therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in christ jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses come at these two faithful men who will be able to teach others also so we say the same thing right paul is telling timothy um he's saying you know whatever you've heard from me now let it not just stay with you but you teach to others okay come at these which means there is a you know there is a i mean it's a careful handling and handing over okay handing over so you're committing committing these to who you know people who are faithful and also who have the ability to do the same thing to others right who will be able to come at and hand over to others who will be able to teach others also right so again there we see the generation to generation the perpetuating of what god has done in us okay till he comes again of course right <clears throat> so um, so for that there needs to be certain things you know if, uh, impartation of vision the big picture right what drives the whole thing uh, impartation of vision impartation of values the things that we esteem highly the culture right so when it comes to values and culture of course there's so much we can instruct there's also some things that can be imparted things that are caught right just by being there um and by interacting these are <clears throat> yeah some uh, you have a question somebody put a hand up um does somebody want to ask a question okay yeah so um it, these are some intangibles right when it comes to culture and these are things that are observed these are things that are um you know, received <clears throat> um okay uh is it ribby you raised your hand do you have a question okay um so i'm not able to hear anything i don't know if you're trying to ask a question okay uh if it was a mistake you can just <laughs> I, I guess we'll ignore that but if you want you can put it on the chat as well i'm not able to hear uh, since your mic is not unmuted okay so uh impartation of vision values and culture okay uh providing direction pointing the way ahead you know we saw that as we are grooming the next generation and then also at um you know at a stage where we say it's a it's, it's a stage of uh, you know you're going past the growth stage then it's time to step aside so that the one who is being nurtured can step into the role right so so this does not happen overnight so the thing is to pray and uh, you know plan ahead and see okay who can right um and uh, always be open um uh, to the lord to whom he may bring in and uh, uh, you know connect to the ministry to the vision uh, so that they can walk alongside and receive all this okay so <clears throat> so uh, raising the next generation and of course it's in the kingdom builders book by pastor ashish um, there's a there's a whole lot of information there so you can uh, go through that and uh, you know uh, 
and I think the the Paul and Timothy relationship uh, is also a very very uh, useful um, you know uh, study, which is also there, uh, right? Um, in Kingdom Builders, so yeah, you could do that. Okay, so ne <clears throat> next thing is about our life plan. Okay, so we're looking at. Uh, uh, um, you know, it, 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 when we when we say plan, we looked at what a plan is. It's a series of steps for what needs to be done uh, ahead, what needs to be done in the future. So, um, when you look at a life plan, we are looking at okay, personally, you know, we're not looking at planning for. You know, it could be planning for the ministry, planning for the organization, but also you know, us as ministers, as a person, as a leader. What does God have in store? Okay, now, or what is it that God, the desire that God has put in your heart to do, and and we plan ahead, and we say, okay, God, um, maybe it it can be you know a period of four years, five years, uh, or blocks of four years, or blocks of five years, blocks of ten years, even, right? Saying, okay, God, in the next four years in the next five years this is what i want to see happen or this is what i i sense the direction that you're leading me um and and then you know put it together and uh, and do it in a prayerful manner right we are like any plan right? we are allowing god to to really lead us in this whole planning process right we are involving him in the planning process it's uh, it's not uh, without him we are involving him and also we know that it can actually um, undergo change right undergo change undergo so it can be refined uh, over a period of time that's fine but then we need to have that uh, that plan in place it helps to have that plan in place right so we know that okay god you know this four years um, this is what i I envisioned, uh, of course, with you inspiring me, you know, uh, let's say 2023 20, 20, to 2026, uh, or 2023, 20, four, five, six, yeah, four years, um, maybe five years, 27. Now, this is what I envision, and this is what you know I'd like to do in these four years. Uh, I feel that desire, and thank God. So, uh, you know, you move in step with it. Okay. At the end of the second year, at the end of the third year, we we are praying and and persevering into the things that we we want to get things done, you know, uh, in our lives. And so um, we'll get into the details of it uh, in our next class, right? Where we look at um, this is something that we studied in our Sunday services also, right? Um, Sunday sermon um, when we started off in the month of Jan. So we will look at that in detail. I'll also share the link uh, of the Sunday sermon. I'll put it on the stream so that you can like listen to it uh, and watch the sermon. And then we can we can meet uh, when we meet in our next class. We can talk about that, right? Okay, so we'll stop here, um, and then we'll pick it up next class. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Right. God bless.